Members of the U.S. Congress, they are looking to hold the Chinese government accountable for the alleged mass internment of ethnic Uyghur Muslims and other minorities in the country's Xinjiang region. The lawmakers introduced legislation on Thursday calling on the Trump administration to sanction Chinese officials over their treatment of the Uyghurs. Ivan Watson has more. Christy, American politicians agree on very little these days. And yet on Thursday, a bipartisan group of U.S. lawmakers submitted the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act, and it slams the Chinese government for the alleged mass detention of hundreds of thousands of Uyghur Muslims and members of other ethnic minorities in China's western Xinjiang region. China rejects this criticism, saying it's combating Islamist extremism. But I've been talking to a growing number of Uyghur Muslims who say their loved ones are being detained, it appears, simply because they have connections outside of China. <laughs> There's a lot of love in this apartment in Virginia between a mother and her children. But something, someone actually, is missing here. This is my sweet. This is uh, my. Uh huh. This is Alina. In 2015, ethnic Uyghur Mihrigul Tursun, then a citizen of China, gave birth to triplets in Egypt, where she'd been living and working. And barely a month later, she flew home with them to Xinjiang, a region of western China. At the airport, she says Chinese police detained her and took away her babies. I asked her, where is my baby? Please give me my baby. Then he... Taped your mouth. Yes. Mihrigul says police jailed and interrogated her for the next three months. The day of her release, she went to the children's hospital in Urumqi to see her infants. When I come to the hospital, doctor say, okay, my baby can go outside the hospital. He say, yes, he died. I looked at him, what, what, what die? He say, your son died yesterday morning, six o'clock. I don't believe it. And I scream, why you kill my son? And they say, if you scream, I call, please uh, stop, be quiet. And they give me my baby, so cold. I say, why he died? What happened? He say, if he make operation, and then he cannot uh, strong, so he died. CNN reached out for comment from Irumchi Children's Hospital, but did not receive a response. No, no, no. The surviving siblings have scars on their necks. A CNN medical expert says that suggests they, like their deceased brother, received intravenous tubes for nutrition at a time they should have been breastfeeding. Mitigul says her son's death was just the beginning of a three-year nightmare, during which she was jailed two more times and tortured. They ask a question. When I say I don't know, they start beat me so hard. During the second imprisonment, she says she was put in a crowded cell with 50 other women, all ethnic Uyghurs from her hometown in Cherchen. Someone is my doctor, someone is my medium school teacher, someone our neighbor, all people, 80% I know. The U.S. government alleges this is part of a much larger, frightening pattern. Since April 2017, Chinese authorities have indefinitely detained at least 800,000 and possibly more than 2 million Uyghurs, ethnic Kazakhs, and members of other Muslim minorities in internment camps. Beijing has gone from denying these alleged mass detentions to saying prisoners are getting vocational training. Authorities recently took some diplomats and journalists on a carefully supervised tour of some of these facilities. Some detainees told journalists the camps re-educate them. All of us found that we have something wrong with ourselves. And luckily enough, the Communist Party and the government offer this kind of school to us for free. The climate of fear in Xinjiang can be felt halfway around the world. I lost contact with my family in 2017, and I just... So that was the last time you heard your mother's voice? Yes. And your father? Yes. 21-year-old Arfat Erkin came to the U.S. three years ago to get a university education. But gradually, his parents stopped sending tuition money and stopped calling him. 
Then last September, Arfat made this desperate appeal on YouTube. I have confirmed that my father sentenced to nine year prison and my mom is in concentration camps. If both of your parents are detained, who's taking care of your 10 year old brother? I don't know. If you could say something to your parents right now, what would you say? I hope they're just alive. Afraid to go home, Arfat has since been granted asylum in the U.S. Many Uyghur students are similarly stranded here. They're terrified because they don't know what to do. They don't necessarily want to declare asylum in the United States because that reflects badly on their family. Um, but they've also been getting messages from the region that they shouldn't come back because they will definitely be put in one of these internment camps. During her incarceration, Mirigul Tursun claims she saw fellow prisoners die in detention. It's me, same one room, nine women die, I see. So, so much people die, I have torture like this, I will become crazy. The Chinese government denounces criticism of its human rights record, saying these preventative counter-terrorism measures protect more people from being devoured by extremism. <laughs> Mirigul and her children are now in the U.S. going through the asylum process. But it's not easy. <coughs> Three-year-old Moez suffers chronic asthma attacks, and Mirigul can't afford a pediatrician. One day, she tells me, she'll tell her surviving children the Chinese government killed their brother. Christy, I can't stress enough how powerless and anguished these Uyghurs outside of China feel knowing that their loved ones are missing and not knowing if they're alive or dead or how they're being treated or where they're being held. And even more eerie in the century is the fact that they're terrified of even calling home to friends or loved ones because they feel simply an international call could get more people thrown into the camps. Christy? Wow, gut-wrenching stories of horror and heartbreak. Ivan Watson reporting there. You're